ready? It's the roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. All right, so if you've been watching us every single week, you know that I've been raving, raving about Death of a Salesman. We had Wendell, we had Delaney, and I'm so excited to have McKinley here. McKinley Belcher III has been on stage and on television screens. He broke my heart in this show. McKinley, you broke my heart. It's so good. You need to you need to get down to see Death of a Salesman at the Hudson Theater. McKinley Belcher the Third is here. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you do. You I'll break. take that instruction any day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went, I saw, and I loved it. I remember reading it in acting school. And I talked, we talked to Delaney and we talked to Wendell here on this show. And I went and saw it two weeks ago. And it just your the performances you all give are mind blowing. Thank you. I'm exhausted you. for you. <laughs> Especially on two show days. <laughs> can't even imagine. Well, before we get into it all, if you want to get your tickets to see it, make sure you go to salesmanonbroadway.com. It's playing right now at the Hudson Theater. So you're you're from Atlanta? I am. You're from Atlanta, and this is what I found most fascinating reading uh, about you and your career. What I found most fascinating about you and your career is that you're like, uh, I always call my, my stuff unfinished business because I came back to this nonsense later. You didn't go to originally go to college for acting. I didn't. I uh, For the longest time, I always said I was going to be an attorney. So um, I studied political science and communication hey. studies. <laughs> <laughs> So when I told I was, my parents that I was going to be an actor, they were like, huh? <laughs> Where did that listen, come from? I, I always say I was a political science major. And if you, if you want to be an actor, besides going to acting school, being a politician is the second best. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at 33, with two master's degrees and teaching fifth grade, I went back to acting school. My parents were like, what oh. is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, no. But and then from there, look at the journey. Look at the credits and the work on television and stage. And now this, um, what a ride. Yeah, I feel very blessed. Well, I want to go back. If we go back, a lot of the people that you're on stage with in this show, you have worked with before. I have, yeah. So uh, the first thing that I remember um, hearing Rachel Chafkin, who has been here with us too, as well as Brilliant, um, the Royale, which played in Lincoln Center. This the, uh, And how was this connected somehow to the cast of Death of a Salesman, if you don't mind? Yes, uh, Chris Davis, who plays Biff in our production of Death of a Salesman, um, was the lead in, in the Royale. And <laughs> I was sort of playing his protege, <laughs> uh, a young boxer rivaling him. Uh, so it's really cool to think that we have like, nearly, if not more than a six year journey of a lead up uh, to doing this play. So like jumping into this play, we had a whole rapport and like uh, a dynamic before we even started. So it was like starting from a basis of trust and uh, familiarity. Well, what's so, I mean, obviously, Will, the, this cast is off the chart. I mean, from the cast of your show is insane. But the relationship is so. <laughs> insane, insane. The relationship, yeah, there's Willie and there's Linda and all of the family, but the brothers mm. is the, the subtext of their relationship and the way that it's played out and how you both literally age and go back in time in the flash. I feel like I'm spoiling it, but I mean, have we all, you better have read it. You read Death of a Salesman, right, everyone? Sure. So, <laughs> it's, but the the rivalry is so nuanced. There's such, um, I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but there's so many layers to that relationship of love and trust, but the, but the, um, the jealousy and the anger. Yes. It's played out so beautifully on stage. Thank you. I think that's I think that was very important to me and Chris, but also very important to our director, Miranda, is that like at the heart of all this is love. But even in families, we all know that like giving and receiving love can be sometimes difficult, ironically enough. Uh, so especially for me playing happy, starting from this place where uh, he's constantly vying for attention in a way, in many ways, not getting uh, the kind of love and attention that he needs to be validated. Uh, and when you feel constantly passed over in that way, it's interesting to think, what does that do to you? Uh, uh, how does that sort of color how you see the world and how you approach other people and even your family? And so and that's, that's all really juicy and exciting to me. And it's really exciting for us in the audience to see it because you literally see the uh, I could talk to you and be a nerdy actor about what you're doing all day long, but you make choices as a, as a cast and you in particular, you really see, and it really expresses on the stage, 
the longing that you want for your father mm -hmm. and the love you have for your, obviously your mother, but your brother as well. But there's yes. this, you're just, oh, you just, when I say you breaks my heart, it's not the end. It's not what you think is the heartbreaking part that first gets me. It's your character to be that forgotten kind of, and the way he then goes about his oh. life to try to find his attention Yeah. as a result of what he grew up. Yeah, but to me, that's a, a very much a real life thing because like there are so many of us that walk through the world that like how we approach our careers, how we approach our lives, how we interact with other people are colored by our kind of like childhood traumas and the things that we did without. And some of us are aware of those things and some of us are not. But uh, yeah. I, I think it's beautiful when you can see kind of the colors of that in how people act with each other. So like, Absolutely. It the worst, it, <laughs> no, it's true. I, I saw it and it, it, it really, and I, I know the work that goes into building that kind of relationship. When you got this script and you've been working with this show for a moment, can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit behind the scenes? What is your approach to something that has been done that is a yeah. piece of American, it's an American treasure of a script? Do you do you mark it up? Do you memorize first? Do you think? Do you daydream a, a, a past and a history? What? How do you approach something like this and bring your own artistry to it? Sure, I, I feel like I should start from the place that, like, like you said, I, I read this in high school too, and um, I think it's really profound and interesting that, like, as a person who looks like me, I read this story and I never thought of it as a family that looks like me. So I remember when I when I finally went to grad school, uh, which was for acting um, at USC, uh, I remember doing a monologue as Biff, ju just for the sake of like getting a chance to do a piece of this play, thinking that I would never get to do it professionally. So it, it is incredibly like a full circle moment for me to even be in this production. Like I, I never thought that would happen and uh, I'm very grateful for it. Um, but in terms of how I, I approach of it, approach it, I think especially if you're gonna do this story with a black family, then like it means that that there are various places in the play that like, I think you, there's a, a depth at it. And um, some things, even if they're the same words, you hear them and they ping off of your heart and your soul in a different way. And uh, so my, my first sort of like passes through the script were like really just trying to mine and, and think about like how I bring my experience, my culture and um, um, my specific role in this family to all of the things that Happy has to go through over the course of the play and to make sure that I'm giving him as full of an arc as I can. And then once we got in rehearsal, it was really just about like a learning the words, but also like giving myself fully to the experience and to these amazing actors who are around me, many of which who I've, I've dreamed of working with and um, uh, and responding honestly to what's happening in the room. And when, when you're around people who are really like bringing their whole heart and soul every single day. And Wendell is a perfect example of that. Sometimes I marvel at how much he gives. And, and, and he was doing this even when we were in the rehearsal room. I was like, man, he's like giving his whole heart, sweat and all <laughs> uh, 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 every single time. And that, that inspires me. But like it, it makes it the playing in the room that much easier because it means you, you must be present and you, you must be willing to give and risk something every single day. Well, that's when I le when I left the theater after this tour de force and I saw, you know, I walked out the theater and Wendell walks out the theater and he's shaking hands and saying, I'm like, you just left your whole mind, body, and spirit yes. on that stage. The show ends and I just sat there and it was a very, ca there's a lot of beautiful shows on Broadway right now. There's a lot of great yes. stories being told. This story, and you bring up the important part, it's the first time that it's a cast, uh, artists of color that are performing this on Broadway. And it does take a different, there are lines and moments that are seen in such a different lens that are so powerful. Yes. If it's about pride, if it's about money, if it's about class, if it's about the way you're being seen in a community, that I hope that this story, and um, it's showing a family dynamic in a way that's never been seen with these words that were written so long ago. Absolutely. I mean, how, how often do you get a chance to do I mean, A, it's an honor to be on Broadway in any shape or form doing like a, a, a beautiful play. But the idea that we get to do that and then also make history in a way feels really like special. And uh, <laughs> when, when I think of Wendell and Sharon, uh, the first words that come to mind for Wendell are generous, his, his generosity, but both like in how he approaches the world outside of acting, but also as an actor, there's a kind of generosity of spirit is that he's willing to give as much as he has that day. Uh, and then when I think of Sharon, it's like love. 
a both love for like the, the craft, um, but also like a love for humanity and a love for, uh, I, th I think it's how she, what, what she leads with when she approaches people in, in life. And it's really beautiful. Well, she's so beautiful. And listen, if you love her voice, if you're somebody who has seen, go yes. see the show. There's a little, there's, oh, there's a little, <laughs> little surprises there for you. If you're looking at, and we've been watching you, some of the other credits that you've had, if you're, if you're TV fans and you're not in New York, you, you may have seen him in things like this. You may have seen Street or you, the Ozarks. Um, and then, you know, we own the city. Speaking of casts of the show, I mean, yes. Delaney is is in it and he's playing. I saw him after the show and I said, You're not a bad guy. You're not you're not a criminal or a cop in this show. You're, <laughs> you're, you're I was ready for you to, you know, handcuff somebody. Um, it's a real different role for him as well. Do you as a collective cast, how do you take care of yourself, McKinley, three night three hours plus every night of this emotional roller coaster? Um, that's a good question. I always find that like it helps me process things and um, let go of things just to move. Uh, uh, so like running and working out is actually a helpful way for me to sort of uh, let go of a lot of things. And there are even some days like my, I live in Jersey city and uh, uh, I live a little ways from that path train. And um, I could take what they call the light rail to get home, but I often just walk it just cause it, it just helps me like process and let go of, of, of the journey over the course of the show. Um, and then, doing a play that at its center is about love. Um, I think embracing the love in your life uh, just is, is a healthy way of uh, purging some of that stuff. Absolutely. That but the, the, the reality is like, is some of it does stay with you. And, um, and in some ways I'm grateful for that. Cause like I have a complicated relationship with my dad and this play has made me think about that relationship in a more nuanced way. And um, the idea that you can do a piece of art and do a play or tell a story and it illuminate things about your own life in ways that you never thought of it is really beautiful. And I'm grateful for that. Well, I left and thought, and I was, I went with my best friend and um, sons and fathers are a complicated relationship. I'm sure like mm -hmm. mothers and daughters can be. And I left and it, I thought about my dad as well, who mm -hmm. is, I love him. He's a pain and I love him. <laughs> and, um, and I, was like what you really see in the show is the complicated full dynamic that is that is Willie Loman and his family, and it's like mm. you know he's doing wrong, but you he's your dad. It's like a hard, It's like that really. It was real bittersweet. It's a it's a real yeah. and done so well. I think one of the things that I didn't think about like reading it in high school, or maybe I wasn't ready to receive that is like just thinking about how important having a healthy relationship to the truth is um, mm. in a family and is in any dynamic where you're trying to give and receive love. Like if, if, if you can't be honest with yourself and honest with that other person, um, loving becomes incredibly complicated. Well, that's a whole ass word right there. That was a whole, <laughs> that, that, that it, it's so true. All the pink elephants in the room between any relationship, mm. Um, really doesn't do the other person any good and it really hurts yourself and you really see it uh, for a great example. You're in Jersey City. I'm like down the road. Uh, I'm going to, if I see you running down the road, I'm in Jersey too. I'm going to have to pick you up. I'm going to be like, no, you can't let you <laughs> <How play. laughs> it's going to be cold, McKinley. No, <laughs> um, this, the show has a run. It's running. It's a limited run as of now. You better clear your schedule for June because you all are going to be at every drama desk, Tony Award, Critics' Choice. You all are going to be. This show is 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 a masterclass in performance and acting. If you're in New York or you're planning to come to New York, you have to make sure that you get your tickets to come see Death of a Salesman. It's a way that you've never seen it done before and such a beautiful. You, Andre DeShields is dripping in diamonds. You need to yes, just go get is. your tickets. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> he is fabulous. He is living. <laughs> you have to see it. It's worth it um, for sure. Uh, when you, before I let you run and go, before um, you, you have all this television credit now, movie credit, and you're working uh, on screen as well as on stage. Yes. Is act, I've asked this question to many people. Is acting acting or is the stage a certain type of craft that you have, you approach mm. it differently than when you do your television and film work? I always like to say that the theater is my first love. Uh, it is the reason why I started acting. Um, and there is, there's a, uh, 
an electricity and um, an aliveness that I feel on stage um, that I don't get anywhere else. And, and, and it's almost like a spiritual experience, too, because it's like you're communing with a group of people. And this thing is only happening in this moment where we're telling this story, meditating on these ideas and unpacking these hearts. And tomorrow, it may be the same story, but it will feel different. So, like, it's like a magic thing that's happening in the moment with us. And I also think it's a really empowering thing for actors to do, because in any other medium, it is someone else's responsibility to give the story to the, to the people and on the stage is the only place where the actor gives the story directly to an audience. Um, and that is a very specific experience. Um, I do love and enjoy doing the on-camera stuff for TV and film and all the other things that are available to us using our voices. Um, Cause it, you get a kind of uh, intimacy and, um, and it takes another responsibility off your shoulders that you don't have to think about how it's given. You just have to have a truthful, honest experience. Um, but I don't think I'll ever not do the stage work because there is a kind of muscularity that is required to do long form storytelling. There is no cut. Once you get on stage and start, the story is being told and you must go. You must <laughs> respond and figure it out. Um, and, 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 and that's like uh, uh, scary sometimes. It's a lot enlivening sometimes. Um, it's thrilling. Um, but it, it's something that I I love because I think it helps me grow as an actor as I journey through a career. And um, it's, it's like stepping into the continuum. People have been telling stories for as long as we have been on, on this planet. Um, and I feel like I've become a part of the greater part of humanity, not to be too foo-foo about it. Um, by doing this though, it's like I, I, I'm, I'm in touch with the ancestors and um, connected to people. And, and that's something that I, I crave and that I'm excited about is how we connect with each other. And I, I think you've said it, but you're, that's what I love about art and artistry is that you get to show humanity and you show humanity yeah. to those thousands of people every night and millions of people when you do it on, on, on screen. But I get it. There's something magic about walking on that. It's sacred. It, that, that stage and those, your fellow actors, it's a sacred um, moment for sure. And it feels that way for the audience. I'm so excited that this approach of the show is the way that it is. I saw Top Dog yesterday oh, yeah. and... Um, and I was sitting there and I was like, these are the shows that make, I'm, I get in trouble. I'm not shading, but I don't need to see the movie remake. I don't need to see, <laughs> there's something for everyone, but to see people, and that's not that they're not working, but to see this kind of work that you are doing and some of these shows are doing on Broadway this year is so wonderful to see the art and artistry and bringing it to an audience. So congratulations and thank you for thank sharing. You. The sacrifice that you take takes is, is, is duly noted. Thank you. I have a fun fact, just because you said Top Dog Underdog, and obviously it's directed by Kenny Leon. And uh, my Broadway debut was with a soldier's play directed by Kenny Leon. And, oh, there you go. See, it's ready. I like it. <laughs> and ironically enough, I'm from Atlanta. So uh, Kenny has a, a theater company called True Colors Theater Company in Atlanta. And before I went to USC for grad school, the, the second play, or it's a musical, I did uh, is uh, The Wiz. Uh, with his theater company. So uh, it was a full circle moment for me to have my Broadway debut with him. And um, I, I love seeing him uh, just like shine bright, like directing all the beautiful things on, on Broadway. And it, it's also really beautiful to see, like we've been, in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of conversations about like um, access and representation and making sure that both on Broadway, off Broadway and at theaters at large, that like it looks like the world that we all live in. And I'm, I'm really excited that, like, if you look at the slate of Broadway and off-Broadway shows uh, this season, um, I see so many different kinds of people. I see uh, uh, colors, uh, different expressions of gender, um, uh, uh, classic plays, new plays, and musicals. So that, 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 to me, that means that the tide is moving in the right direction. And um, that's really encouraging. Same. Same. That's how I, that's exact. You said it way, way more eloquently than what I was trying to say. That's exactly what, what I feel and hope as, as well, that there's a place for everyone to be seen and yes. heard uh, on stages around the, the world. Truly. Um, if people want to get tickets, like I said, go to salesman on Broadway. If you want to follow more, you can follow him. He's McKinley B cubed on, hey. <laughs> on Instagram, find him and say, Hey, and make sure you see the show. And um, look, you go. 
Just come go, through and see us, y'all. <laughs> go, 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 go see them at the Hudson. And um, it's an honor and pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for today. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity and good questions. <laughs> sure. Thank you. All right.